Well, before we talk about tonight's show or about We Are, I wanted to say personal congratulations on the Academy Award for Soul. I mean, that in and of itself, John, is so huge. I mean, you won, I think I saw somewhere 35 different international awards for the, the score that you and Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross did for that, for that movie. How does that, how does that make you feel? What's, and what's the impact of winning an Oscar for the best music for a motion picture? Wow. I mean, overnight, everything changed. But I think for me, a lot of it was the reward of working on a film like Soul. It's such an amazing thing. It ties together everything, as you can see now from this show tonight, it ties together everything that I really am all about. The big existential questions about the soul and our purpose in life and where we come from, jazz and music and all of the, the great things that we got to do in that score, to see it at the time in the world that it came out in, at the end of 2020, after we had been through so much, to have it reach so many people and give them some light. And for that to be the thing that we're awarded so heavily for, I, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's so transcendent and I'm so humbled by it. And it's such a beautiful film. Everything about it. Oh, thank you so much. I, I am um, I'm honored to have been able to work on We were a family for two years working on that mm -hmm. film. And uh, I still keep in touch with everybody. And we look forward to just seeing how over the years, you know, Pixar and, and their films are like mythology <laughs> for kids. <laughs> so over the years to see what the legacy of the film will be will be quite um, an amazing thing. And a, and a short aside... Uh, just a story after the Oscars, the day after I went to visit Herbie Hancock, who he was the first black composer to win the Oscar for mm -hmm. Best Original Score. And I'm the second, and he won the year that I was born. So there's all kind of celestial tie-ins that I feel like are just so much bigger than us about that film. So let's fast forward to tonight, tonight's show. So now you know what we do. This yes. is what we've been doing for the last 47 years. Yes. And... It's your first time in front of our, our cameras, same cameras that we use to shoot Ray Charles and Herbie Hancock, Mavis Staples, mm -hmm. Willie Nelson, so many people over the years. How'd it feel for you out there personally? Listen, I'm honored. I've been a fan. I've seen the show even before I knew the name of the show. When I was a kid in New Orleans and I would watch PBS, there would be so many great things that I would see and artists who I was yet to meet. And I would just be enamored by seeing how real, it's just real, it's the truth, it's no frills, it's music, and people who love music in the audience, and that's it. All you got to do is put them, put them in a room together, put the greats with the greats. <laughs> and we've had some of the greats from New Orleans, you know, we have Fats up there, we had Alan Jusant, oh, yeah. the Nevilles, of course, Yes. Dr. John, Yes. Oh my goodness. 30 Dozen, on and on <laughs> and on. I'm, I'm honored to be here, and... Also, you, you should see, you'll see in the broadcast, the back of our, um, our wardrobe, there was an embroidery. Many things were embroidered in um, the wardrobe, but there was one word that was on every wardrobe piece, and it's folkonic. It's mm -hmm. the mix of folk and iconic. And we have such a, a rich American mythology. Blues, soul, folk, jazz, rock, we, pl we don't believe in genres. I believe in the spirit of music. And what that spirit brings, you find in culture. And I just, I've always wanted to use music as a way to represent the greater mythology of who we are. I think you just invented a new word. That's right, folkonic. And it's perfect. It makes so much sense. Yes. So talking about the new album, at least the album that was released this year. Yes. The name of your new album is We Are, and of course, as soon as you hear that for the first time, your brain goes, we are who? We are what? Right. Fill in the blank. <laughs> yes, that's but as you design. said, it is both the question and its own answer. Absolutely. What do you mean by that? Absolutely. Oh, wow. This, that can go deep. It's just really about the idea that we have so much possibility being alive being here breathing, even this conversation, this amazing exchange that we're having, you've been here and have fostered so many great performances for years. 
I'm someone who's seen these performances. I'm here now. I've just performed. The space and time that we exist in is filled with possibility. And we have choices to make in government. We have choices to make in our community. We have choices to make in our family, our friendships. We have all of these choices. And we have to look in the mirror one day and, and decide who we are, who we are going to be. So it's the question, and it also is the answer. It's an affirmation. We are. We are here. And your record, it is, it, it's really a loving tribute to your Southern roots mm -hmm. and to black heritage. And it's, it's so personal, your father, your grandfather, yes. your high school marching band. Yes. You had so much of yourself and your, your DNA invested in, in this record. Oh, yeah. I, I've really wanted to make this record for many years. And I believe that, that as an artist, everything happens at the right time, in the right place. You just got to wait for it to emerge. You know, I've been working on this idea of blending my heritage and all of the music from around the world that is indigenous. The, 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 the music that I call root music, what I've called social music in the past. And that really is, is taking a long time for me to synthesize in my brain, how does that sound? And how do you put that in an album? And we achieved that with the We Are album. It's hard for me to get my head around the idea that you planned and did all of this in one week. <laughs> from your dressing room at the, the Colbert uh, offices up in New York. I mean, where did all that come from in such a short amount of time? You know, the, the subconscious is always working. So it's been many years in the making. But then when that right time and place, that feeling of what we call inspiration is something that just hits you. And you know, when you have inspiration, you can't explain it, but everything is clear now. It's very clear for me in that moment when, what I needed to do. And then it's just about walking the path and doing it. A lot of times the world gets out of the way. And what stops us is our mind. We, we think that, oh, well, I can't do this or I won't be able to do this. Or, or something occurs to us that blocks us mentally. When a lot of times, again, the possibility is endless, especially when we are fueled by inspiration. The music on this record really represents who you are as a person and as a musician, and it sort of opens a whole new sonic chapter. Oh yeah, for you, right? Oh my goodness, it's I so mean, different on many different levels. You know, from making records since I was 16, 17 to 33 years old, you know, you learn a lot. I was talking with Stevie Wonder, who was, happens to be um, a, a patron saint. There were many patron saints to this project. Just thinking about people who could um, really inspire the energy of the project. And um, just talking to him about making records, every record is a chapter of your life. It's a snapshot of a chapter of your life. And every record you're adding to what you said in the last chapter. So this really is something of another part of the story. This is the beginning to another part of the story. And... Um, I'm excited to see where it goes because there's so much that we left on the table, believe it or not. Uh, there's so much that we left on the table um, that we are is just implying and pointing to, and we're going to go down all of those roads, God wills. People use the word joy to describe your music and, and you. There's a joyfulness that just it permeates your, your music. Where, where does this sense of joy come from? Not, not just in your music, but in, in life. Where does joy come from? Wow, wow. That's a deep one. Yes, I mean, you know, joy can come from many things, but I think the root of it comes from knowing, who, knowing what you are and who you are and having that sense of affirmation to walk through the world, whatever good comes your way, whatever bad comes your way, whatever it is, knowing who you are and to be happy and to smile through anything that you face is not the idea. The idea is to just, is to live and to be. And that's it. That's what a lot of the great religious practices are about. It's connecting with the creator, God, connecting with your source so that you know who you are, what you were created to do. 
And then the journey of life happens and there are ups and downs. But because you're connected to that source, now you can move through it. Now that's joy on a, on a personal level, but then there's the, the, joy, the joy that comes from community. Well, that people coming together. That's a different kind of joy. That's the joy that I believe we were meant since the beginning of time to experience together. So much that divides us now. So much is dividing us. So many things that are made now to separate, but our natural state is togetherness, community. And that, that's true joy because it's also a part of our purpose of being. What's the one thing that stands out to you during this whole year and a half of, of pandemic times? I know you've said that for you, in, in many ways, it was like a, a spiritual um, moment or, or a moment in time, um, but also turned out to be very productive for you as well. But of all the things that happened to you personally and professionally and the fact that, that, that you had to basically, like the rest of the world, stop what you were doing, what stands out the most about it? Hmm. Wow, that's a that's um that's still something I'm processing. Mm. I, I talk with God every day. I try to speak to God and and listen to the wisdom that I have yet to realize that I already have. It's within us. It's a still small voice, and I just try to listen to that every day. And I think one day I'll realize everything I've learned from this experience, and we all will collectively, but I'm not even there yet. And neither are any of us. I think we're still all processing and coming out of this. Yeah. Well, my last question, <clears throat> maybe going even a little deeper, but there's nobody else quite like you, and you've even said that yourself. You're, you're unique in, in what you do, the scope of your music, and the way you express yourself. And you made the comment uh, in an interview that I read that there's a lot that's still coming over the next 10 years or so that will reveal a lot about your life's calling. That's kind of a heavy thought, trying to look down the, the, the many roads, like you say. <laughs> yes, you know, life is, is heavy, but it's beautiful. It's both at the same time. And as much as as we have possibility at every moment, we never know when we're gonna be called into the other realm. So I'm always thinking about how can I make the best use of my time here? You see, that's the thing that will make you embrace your own individuality, what makes you specifically who you are out of the billions of people who have existed before and will exist in the future. What is it specifically about you being in this time and place with your experiences, all of the things that have happened in your life and what are, are innate within you? What, what is it that you have that you really have to say and you only can say it? And that's when I start to feel that um, when I look at the environment, when I listen to God and... and um, you know, I read my Bible, I think about what is it that I have to say and what is it I have to do, and I get a vision, many visions. I get a lot. I see a lot. I see a lot. I, I don't know how else to explain it other than I see a lot. And you have to know who you are because if you don't know who you are, you'll miss the vision that is meant for you. Um, so that's a little heavy, but I believe that it's... um. That's also where joy comes from, because when you see that, you're motivated. No matter what happens to you, no matter what goes on, you know, okay, I'm going to just keep moving toward that vision. Well, it's a journey, and it's an adventure. Thank you for bringing your joy to our stage tonight and sharing it with so many, so many people. <laughs> and we're looking forward to sharing it with our audience uh, when it finally gets to uh, PBS in the fall. Oh my um, goodness. It's been a real pleasure, John. And as you uh, find your way down that road, we'd love to have you come back again when, whenever you're ready. You just, you just say when. Oh, it'd so. be an honor. As I said before, this is one of our great institutions of music and culture and expression. I would, I would be honored to come back.